I'm biased. I worked at Facebook. Um, and when I think of that company, I think of one of the, frankly, craziest missions in the world. When you think about the idea of connecting every human um, and, and delivering this net positive impact in the world. Um, when it comes to finance or payment rails, it seems like many of the incumbents or legacy players uh, aren't too thrilled about a company with a couple billion users uh, entering into the game. And in this Medium post that you wrote, I want to read one, uh, one one specific paragraph where you said, uh, quote, I've repeatedly heard variations of the argument that the payments and financial services industry shouldn't let Facebook be part of these innovations. I've heard multiple conversations about how this proposal would be so great if only Facebook wasn't involved, end quote. Um, and in that, there's kind of two pieces, right? It's like there's the innovation and, and the technology progress, but then there's Facebook's involvement. What do you think it is about Facebook specifically that kind of changes the tune or, or changes the perspective people have on uh, what you all are trying to do? Well, so there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, so, no, no pressure. <laughs> no, no. I mean, look, it, it's fine. I, I'll, I'll happily do it. So, uh, look, I think it's totally fair for people to have a degree of scrutiny of Facebook that is very high. Um, and I think that uh, we have to demonstrate that we can be trustworthy in this industry and we have to do that by playing in it and over years of really executing really well and 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 really earning people's and institutions trust prove that we can be a force for good in that industry uh, and all i'm asking is for a fair shot right it's like you know the, the part that i was trying to address is basically you know i don't think of america as a place where you know we single out specific companies from entering an industry um, just because um, there's uh, uh, there are questions uh, about said company, as long as the company can actually meet the regulatory hurdle to operate in the space, which you know clearly uh, you know on on the Novi side we're we're ready there because we've obtained the appropriate licensing to actually operate in the space, uh, and we're eager to go solve big problems. And I think that we have a track record of doing that. And 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 I I, I brought that up in in my post as well, which is that if you look at communication. Um, the, the world prior to the internet and over the top messaging apps was very different. People were paying a dollar a minute for an international call. We were paying like 15 to 25 cents per text message. And sometimes it wouldn't interoperate between mobile operators. And then the internet happened, a protocol for communication and other things. Um, and we built apps uh, on top of this infrastructure, whether it was Messenger uh, or, you know, WhatsApp that uh, was acquired, but, you know, grew tremendously since we acquired it. Um, and, uh, and we completely changed the game for billions of people who can now communicate in an unlimited free way. And that has made a huge impact in the lives of people who can communicate now for free and do all kinds of things that were completely impossible before, like, you know, high fidelity group video chat. Um, and so when you think about all of these things, I think we do have a track record of bringing real benefits to people and reducing costs and broadening access to these services. And that's what we want to do for payments and for money. I think uh, I think we can actually be a force for good. And we're very determined to demonstrate that. Uh, again, I'm biased, but I always tell folks, don't bet against the team at Facebook. They've uh, they've proven themselves over and over again. Um, when you say that you're just looking for a fair shot, uh, help folks understand, like, what are the obstacles in your way? It sounds like they're not regulatory. Uh, is it incumbent players who are kind of standing in the way? Or, or what are those issues that you've got to overcome or the, the challenges in order to be able to operate the way that you want to? No, so I th like I think we need to se to separate what has happened uh, on the Novi side, where basically we went out there and met with uh, state authorities and a number of other countries regulators to get approval to run and operate a wallet, um, and uh, and we've done that, and we uh, will continue to engage with those key regulators over time to prove and demonstrate that uh, we're trustworthy and we're a trustworthy player in the space. Then there's the whole Libra project or what is now called DM, uh, which, you know, first when we introduced it was kind of taken as a product that was about to launch. Um, and at the time it was a white paper and an idea and the goal of actually publishing it early, which is unusual uh, for technology companies, typically they launch products and then they explain what it is, was to actually socialize 
uh, what our intentions were and to try to figure out how we could work together with the industry, with key regulators to actually improve the state of things in payments. Um, and so we put a first step forward with that original white paper. Uh, and then it was pretty clear that uh, a lot of uh, different institutions and people were not that thrilled with this idea. Uh, and then the team uh, at DiEM, uh, which, uh, you know, after a period of time became a completely independent team, uh, started really engaging with regulators around the world, taking their constructive feedback in. And, their, you know, some of the concerns were absolutely valid concerns, you know, things around anti-money laundering and sanctions uh, and stability and consumer protection uh, and sovereignty. Um, and so I feel that, you know, from my vantage point, all and every single one of these concerns were actually addressed uh, over the period of time of the two years or so since we first announced uh, Libra. Uh, and and then, you know, there just undoubtedly on top of addressing regulatory concerns, uh, there is definitely a little bit of pressure on whether Facebook should enter or not enter uh, this space. And, you know, for the reasons I discussed with you before, uh, first of all, DM is not Facebook. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we feel like we can actually be a solution provider and bring real solutions to the big problems that, uh, that many people experience here at home and abroad. Uh, and I think we, we we should have a fair shot, you know, give us the benefit of the doubt. And uh, and I think we'll prove to be trustworthy and a trustworthy player in, in this industry. David, you, you've got to realize that in today's environment, ideas can be scary to people sometimes. So it, it uh, knowing Facebook and kind of the mantra of code wins arguments, um, I don't think people realize how rare it would be to publish a white paper and uh, kind of elicit conversation rather than just go build the product. Um, when you had a lot of the responses and uh, both support and criticism from the audience once uh, you guys actually announced this, did that change anything internally in terms of ambition, plans? You know, obviously there was kind of the moving of Libra out to Diem and, and now as an independent entity. Was there anything else that kind of changed that uh, either good or bad in hindsight that, that happened? No, so the ambition hasn't changed. And by the way, the fact that Libra became an independent entity and renamed into DM, like the renaming wasn't part of the plan, but certainly the fact that the entity was independent from Facebook was definitely part of the plan. And if you read the original white paper, you can see that this was clearly laid out. Um, but uh, but I think, you know, the, the key changes uh, are basically that instead of having a multi-currency stable coin, you have a dollar backed stable coin uh, that will basically match like the value of a dollar at all times. Um, on the other side of it, you have a DM association and uh, its regulatory perimeter that changed from being uh, based in Switzerland, which you know might have made sense when you had a multi-currency idea or issuing uh, many stable coins, but when you're issuing a dollar denominated stable coin, uh, probably didn't make much sense anymore. So that was all brought back into the US within the US regulatory perimeter. And then I think, you know, for the rest, the process of engaging with international and US regulators has made the, the, the project so much better because I think that now at this point in time, we actually went through all of these exercises of understanding how to design a network um, an asset and a wallet uh, that is actually going to be best in class when it comes to consumer protections and value to be delivered. And so uh, I feel quite good about the journey in terms of all of the positive impact that those conversations have had on the on the project. Uh, and I think, you know, now the time has come to bring it to the world uh, and to show the value that it can bring. Hey guys, bang, bang. Thanks so much for watching The Best Business Show today. And don't forget to check out our partner, SoFi. They make all this possible. They're a super app that lets you save, spend, borrow, earn, and invest all from one single platform. And if you go there today and you sign up for a SoFi Invest account, you can get between $5 and 1,000 bucks for free from SoFi. Not everyone's obviously gonna get $1,000, but everyone gets something. Don't say that I never did anything for you. Go check them out at SoFi.com slash pomp Download the app and go ahead and open an account. SoFi.com slash pomp. And make sure you come back and watch more of the best business show. We're going to build the biggest business show in the world and we need your help.